Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. I, I couldn't pass this one up, just a little preview here. I just asked this to some of my, my students and exactly none of them got it right. And so this if you can get this one right, you are doing pretty good for the integumentary system. So this is related to integumentary interventions. You'll definitely want to test yourself on this one, see if you know the content behind it so that you can be locked in and ready to go for exam day. So the reason I couldn't drive by it is because of uh, it's kind of a tricky concept and I wanted to make sure we spent some time on it. In the integumentary system, this is the largest of the other systems, so between eight and 11 questions here. So I know I just asked you an integ question not too long ago. Uh, that one might've been just a little bit easier than this one. Uh, but in any case, you can test your knowledge on this one, make sure that you are ready to go. Before we get there, if you haven't yet, go ahead and leave us a review wherever it is you're listening to this podcast, whether it be Google Play, Apple iTunes, or Spotify. It legit only takes like one second. It helps so much as we're trying to get the word out. Be sure to check that out. Plus check out ptfinalexam.com. We have ongoing classes if you want all of our freebies, our cheat sheets, you won't want to miss that ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. If you want all of our freebies, totally for free. Great way to, to prepare. We've got some cheat sheets. I think uh, I think you'll enjoy the one about metabolic and endocrine. Kind of a uh, just a fun little preview for some of the hyper and hypothyroidisms. Some of the things that really trip students up. I think you'll enjoy that. So let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. So as per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. Here we go. So when managing a patient at high risk for pressure injuries, which of the following guidelines will be most appropriate? When managing a patient at high risk for pressure injuries, which of the following guidelines will be most appropriate? One, maintain head of bed elevation greater than 30 degrees when in supine. Two, position patient in 30 degree oblique angle when side lying. Three, reassess patient weekly for integumentary changes, and four, reposition every one hour in bed, every 30 minutes in sitting. So again, when managing a patient at high risk for pressure injuries, which of the following guidelines will be most appropriate? One, maintain head of bed elevation greater than 30 degrees when in supine. Two, position patient in 30 degree oblique angle when side lying. Three, reassess patient weekly for integumentary changes, and four, reposition every one hour in bed, every 30 minutes in sitting. So when it comes to managing patients at high risk for pressure injuries, this means that they are scoring very poorly on the Braden scale. So Braden has six categories, like the name Braden has six letters. There are six categories that range from, from mobility to feeding to toileting. Uh, so that's the Braden scale. That's how you measure if someone is a high risk for pressure injuries. In any case, when you are when you're helping or assisting with pressure injury managements or pressure injury guidelines, you'll want to make sure that you position the patient in a 30 degree oblique angle whenever in side lying. That means that they're not in a true side lying, like, like laying directly on their shoulder. Rather, you'll have them at 30 degrees offset. And this is where the rule of 30s comes in for someone. And by rule of 30s, it, it applies to angulation when in side lying or when in supine. So when in side lying, you'd only want to have the patient in a 30 degree oblique angle. So rather than a true 90 degrees upright on your shoulder, you're gonna have them kind of in partial side lying. And you'll see this happen with the pressure injury management bolsters and systems that exist. And even with pressure injury management mattresses, they'll try to get the patient into 30 degrees side lying in order to offload one ischial tuberosity, then they go 30 degrees side lying the other way. That oblique angle, again, it's the primary effect of that is that you don't want them in, in full 90 degrees side lying because it, then it pre places pressure on their greater tubercle of their humerus, their iliac crest. So in this case, a 30 degree oblique angle, that's your best bet for pressure injury management rotations. Now these other answer options are incorrect for several reasons. And number one, maintaining the head of bed elevation greater than 30 degrees when in supine, when in fact it should be less than 30 degrees when in supine. You want to keep the patient really as flat as possible when they're in bed because if you have them in that semi-fowler position, like raising the head of the bed while they're watching TV or eating, you want to limit that time in that position because the shear force created 
as they slouch and scooch down in the bed. And this is just because in a hospital bed, I mean, obviously anytime there's linens and a hospital bed, you lift the head of the bed up, the patient tends to slide down. And so you'll see this, any of you who've worked in patient, you know what I'm talking about, that you usually have to boost the patient up pretty frequently if they have the head of the bed up because they tend to slide down. And so uh, you can get some undue pressure on the on the ischial tuberosities, you can get undue pressure on the sacrum, the posterior superior iliac spines, all of those would be at risk if you have the head of the bed upright for any any serious period of time during the day. So rather than have them with the head of the bed up, chances are you'll probably position them in a full, like in a seat, like lift them out and put them into a wheelchair or something where they are in true seat sitting so then they don't have the shear force. Rather, you can distribute the load onto the, the posterior thighs rather than just the iliac crest, or not the iliac crest, the uh, ischial tuberosities. These other answer options, reassess the patient weekly. Rather, they should be reassessed daily, especially if they're at high risk. So this would be in the case of someone like an ICU. You're going to be checking them daily for pressure injuries. And then finally, the last one, this is the favorite incorrect answer option. Rather than reposition every one hour when in bed, the typical repositioning schedule is every two hours. And so you might say to yourself, well, isn't every one hour better? It's part of the the guidelines, the management system here that you would not, uh, I guess, more more technically is better. But the guideline is every two hours. You're on a two-hour rotation schedule. That's the standard of care. And so repositioning every two hours during the night, during the day, all of that would be standard of care guidelines. That's the And so the question, back to the question, says when managing a patient, which of the following guidelines will be most appropriate? And so most appropriate, reposition every two hours when in bed and at least every one hour when in sitting, but it's more common to be every 15 minutes if the patient can move independently. So uh, let's say the patient is not able to move independently. Well, then it'd be every two hours in bed, every one hour in sitting. If they are able to move independently, then you'd have them every two hours when in bed and every 15 minutes when in, in sitting. And again, part of that's just, a lot of that is dependent on the cushioning system you're using. And there, there are some things, I hate to say it depends, uh, but kind of a symptom-based approach, which is the fancy way of saying it depends. But in any case, your repositioning guidelines are typically every two hours in bed and every one hour in sit sitting, unless they can move independently, then it's every 15 minutes. Uh, the, the patient should be positioned in a 30 degree oblique angle. So it's, it's not a true side lying, it's off of side lying. So a 30 degree oblique angle when in side lying. The head of the bed should be less than 30 degrees when in supine, and that's to avoid shear forces. And then finally, you should reassess daily for any integumentary changes just because of the risk of pressure injuries. And especially for these high risk individuals, you'll, you'll be frequently rechecking them. So anyway, like I said, everyone's favorite incorrect answer option is repositioning every one hour in bed when it really should be repositioning every two, hour, two hours in bed. I got asked the question about when would we want to maintain the head of bed higher than 30 degrees? When would we want to keep the head of the bed up? Uh, usually it's in cases of like TBI or like if you have hemorrhaging in the brain, so intracranial pressure is high. So after a TBI or or, or even a CBA, any, anytime you have, have some type of increased intracranial pressure. Plus there's also the consideration of orthopnea, like in the case of COPD. In that case, you'd have the head of the bed elevated because they would have a hard time breathing when in supine. And so then again, back to our correct answer option here. In this case, it was position the patient in a 30 degree oblique angle when in side lying. That would be of the answers listed here, then that would be the most correct one. And again, I do have the, when I, when I record these podcasts, I create a YouTube video about it. So if you want to follow along and read the full explanation and the reference, you can see all of that over on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. And I guess if no one has said it to you today, let me say thanks. Thanks thanks for what you do. I know that as you're studying, that I, I know it's a pain. I know there's a lot on your plate. Um, I, I just wanna be here for you. So thank you for what you do. Appreciate all of the effort you put into this because not only will it make you a better clinician, but it'll help your patients, your patients' families, your own family for years and years and years, even generations to come. So what you're doing is important and good. I just want to say, you know, not all superheroes wear capes. Some of them get teased about pain and torture. And, <laughs> or my favorite one is, uh, what's the difference between a therapist and a terrorist is you can negotiate with terrorists and not therapists, obviously. And, um, yeah, all, all of the fun, 
If we put the fun in functional, all, all of the fun little jokes about PT, I think, I think you, you know what I'm driving at there. But anyway, thank you for what you do. I know that what you do is, is really important. So in the meantime, take good care of yourselves. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Give yourself a good Will Crane fist bump. I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day, everyone.